So I've got a question for you. Why do you think it is that traditional financial services and centralised banks feel threatened by crypto? It's a good question, isn't it? Let's explore why that could be the case in this video. And straight away, I can kind of answer my own question with just one word. My one word answer would be good old fashioned competition. That's pretty much what it all, all boils down to. Banks, really, let's be brutally honest here, they've had it too good for too long, haven't they? They've always been the sole provider of financial services and they've reaped the rewards that go along with that without ever having any competition. I mean, think about it. We put our harder money in a bank they then lend it out without asking our permission. They lend it out for a high rate of interest. And then as a as a kind of a almost an insulting thank you to us, they give us a paltry, if we're lucky, 0.4% a year in interest. Well, that's how it's always been. But things are now changing. And guess what? They don't like it. Why? Because banks now feel threatened. Frankly, as they should, because in my opinion, and I'd love to know your thoughts on this, please let me know in the comments below, every industry should be disrupted. I mean, isn't that how we grow and evolve, not only as a business, but as as humans, as a species? The reason that banks don't like crypto is because crypto, in particular, decentralized finance, which is, if you like, a subset of cryptocurrency, allows us to bypass traditional financial services. And that's why you and I love it. And that's why banks are fighting it, as Gandhi once said, First, they laugh at you, then they fight you, then we win. Let me give you two specific examples. Now, let me also be, you know, totally transparent. Of course, I still do have money in the bank, and I'm certainly not at all advocating that any of us take all our money out of a bank. I'm not saying that at all. Let me be clear about that. What I am saying is that we want to have some exposure to decentralized protocols because the returns can be a lot greater. For example, I have a high interest savings account in a DeFi protocol. You may have heard me mention it before. It's called Elephant Money. I absolutely love Elephant Money. And one of their products is a savings account called Futures. Now, quite simply, it's very easy to use. Futures is a high interest savings account that pays me 0.5% a day, a day. You wouldn't even get that a year with a bank account. So again, do you see what I'm saying here? We need to kind of think differently and look to where decentralized finance is going. So that's one example of me using this decentralized space to, to benefit my situation and my family as well by using a high interest savings account on the blockchain, not just relying on traditional finance. Second example is I use a service called Spritz Finance. You may have heard about this. This is incredible. It allows me to pay my bills using crypto. I still can't get my head around it. I pay my credit card every month using cryptocurrency, using Spritz Finance. Again, this is where everything is beginning to go. And it's not just individuals like me and you that are really immersing ourselves in this whole decentralized finance space. It's also companies as well. I mean, look at this. I took this uh, off the web just the other day. This was amazing. This was from CNBC. And it says that nearly 75% of retailers plan to accept cryptocurrency payments within the next two years. This is not a fad. This is not something that may disappear in a few months time. Every day, the cryptocurrency space is winning over a new CEO, a new company, a new member of Congress, a new government, a new country. 75% of retailers planning to accept cryptocurrency payments within the next two years. You need to be aware of this. You need to be in this space. Amazon have already suggested that they're open to accepting cryptocurrency payments on their checkout page. Imagine when that happens. That's going to make it so much easier for our parents, for example, who we know they're not going to set up an online wallet to learn all this space. But if it becomes easier, that's when we really get mass adoption. Starbucks have already tested being able to take payments in cryptocurrency. Apple have famously said that they are open to exploring having a decentralized wallet in the next iOS system, in the next iPhone. So the tipping point is coming and this is why banks feel threatened. It's very exciting, particularly what's going to be going on over the next couple of years in this space. Anyhow, let's wrap up this video. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do. We we are a relatively new channel here on YouTube. Fly in DeFi is our name. Our whole purpose is to explain simply this exciting, fast moving and profitable world of decentralized finance. And we'd love to stay in touch with you and keep you notified when we release new content. We do release a lot of new content, but we can only do that if you subscribe. So please do click subscribe below. And uh, that's all for now. My name's Chris Farrell. Talk to you soon.